Now, how far along have you gotten with the experiments? You've had the heart in, in calves up to now. Haven't well, you? right now we are breaking the world's record. The calf, as of today, the operation was 20 days ago, and the calf is alive and healthy and uh, in Salt Lake City, Utah, mm. being taken care of by Dr. Kolf and his magnificently dedicated crew. I've got some pictures here that I'd is like to show you. Is this the operation at, at which you assisted? Yes, uh, this is the operation. And uh, I'll just try to explain it. There's a few pictures there. Uh, if you notice, I'm, I'm uh, checking over a thing called a retractor. Now, this is used to open up the incision area so that the surgeons can better work there. Uh, that's the, the site of the operation. We are just about to remove the real heart from the calf. Now, the next photograph, I think, will show you. Now, there's the, the real heart of the calf in my hand and I'm just about to hand it to the scrub nurse who's next to me. Now, after the real heart is excised from the animal, now we replace it with the artificial heart. And the next photograph will show you. There, I'm holding the artificial heart, and we're just about to implant it in the animal. Uh, this goes into the animal, then we close the chest, and then immediately following the operation, this next picture will show you. Now, this is Dr. Kolf. This is this great man who is actually the inventor of the artificial kidney, although many people uh, know of the kidney, but they don't know the name Dr. Kolf. And you'll notice down below in this crib, uh, right after the operation, the calf is there with an infrared uh, lamp. He's probably still anesthetized. And uh, I have one last picture to show you. And there it is. There is the calf, very, very healthy. Uh, you'll notice his ears are up. And uh, he wags his tail, he eats, he breathes, he does everything that a, a, a living biological specimen can do. And uh, at, this, at this picture, he was eight days post-operative. And uh, as I say, this is now the 20th day. The calf is still alive. I just called Salt Lake City today. Uh, they say that he is very, very healthy. He seems to be eating very, very well. And he shows signs of... Uh, only the Lord can tell how long this animal is going to go this way. Or have you had any problems at all with it, Paul? Uh, well, there have been problems all along the way, but each one of these problems we have you found overcome. that they're not uh, insurmountable. We've been able to overcome these problems. And uh, once we finally get uh, the artificial heart really working exactly the way we'd like it to work, uh, then we will turn our attention to the powering of the heart. And uh, the, the, the amazing thing about this, Mike, is that we started off in one tangent to produce an artificial heart as a total replacement for human beings who up until now have received the regular, normal, live transplants, which have been rejected. That's but nothing like that can happen with an artificial heart. The body can't reject it. No, there's no rejection to an inert plastic because actually rejection goes on by the, uh, the cellular level where the, uh, the, the genetic code that is programmed into the cells will accept its own code. But when you bring in a foreign piece of tissue, then the body makes antibodies to slough that out. But with plastic, there's no rejection. But several other things have occurred that seem to be very, very exciting. Uh, there's also a possibility that this heart could be used outside of the body as an assist to people who are, are experiencing a heart attack and we can then... How, Paul? Well, How outside of the body? How? Well, we can actually, uh, in a layman's term, we can plug in. We can put... Make an incision in the chest? No, no. We take two tubes. It's called uh, cannula. We cannulate two of the main vessels in the upper part of the leg. It's called the femoral artery and vein. Mm -hmm. We will cannulate the two with two tubes that lead to the heart and an oxygenator. Therefore, we will take the blood from the veins, reoxygenate it to turn it red again, pump it through the artificial heart, back into the arteries, and we will reestablish the circulation, taking all of the load and the stress off of the patient's sick heart. I see. There's also one other thought that we're working on now. You, could you, uh, forgive me for asking these layman questions, but could you at that point operate on the real heart and, and possibly correct some of the... Uh, what, is that, what is wrong with it at that point when, you, when you're plugged in, as you said? Uh, well, this... Uh, the ramifications are absolutely mind-boggling of what we can do. You see, once you take the strain off the heart, there's probably no need to go in there to do any surgical reparation. But uh, we are also thinking of if someone dies, and if they are not dead for more than eight minutes, eight minutes is the limit of brain cell deterioration, right. but if they are not dead more than eight minutes, we can also 
cannulate those people, restore the circulation, oxygenate the blood, and then possibly give them cardiac massage or electric shock, and probably and very, very possibly bring them back. Now, give us some of the statistics on, on heart disease there. Well, heart disease How right now... How many lives could possibly, we possibly save this year if this thing were functioning at full level right now? Well, right now we are having 600,000 human beings dying annually from heart attacks. Uh, and the ones that do not die, we are having six people out of ten experiencing heart attacks. Uh, of course, not all of them are fatal. But six out of every ten people who are sitting right here in the studio, including all of us, may become victims of heart attacks. Mm. And we do lose over half a million Americans every year. thousand that's incredible. That's right. You've invented other things too, haven't you? Yes, but nothing has quite given me the, the gratification that this thing has. What else have you invented? Can you talk about it? Well, I've invented a brand new kind of animation, and I brought it to a company uh, in Hollywood called Spung Buggy Works. They're an animation firm that does commercials. And I presented it to them, and uh, we made a deal. Uh, th they seem to feel that it's more than just an animation, that it's a new art form. And uh, we are presently doing two commercials for a very famous bread, which I will not mention. I don't know if I can. But, uh, probably a sponsor of ours. We well, it's Roman meal bread. Yeah, probably somewhere they're a sponsor of ours. And they are going to be showing the commercials in this brand new animation process in about three months, I think. And you're still doing uh, your show on Saturdays? Yes, Run Around. Every, run Kent, around. Kent McCord was one of my guests just yeah, a little while ago. Two of Is Jerry with you today? Yeah, sure Jerry's here. Would you like to see Jerry? <laughs> Did you hear me, Jerry? <laughs> I haven't seen Jerry in a lot of years. Did you have that? You never have a name. Well, I'm sorry to keep him uh, locked up this way, but you, you have never formally no, met never Jerry. never formally Ma met Jerry. Well, this is going to be a first. Jerry, I want you to come out of here. Jerry? Oh, look at the crowd. <laughs> well, this is, a, this is a, a very, very big highlight for me. I'd like to introduce you two people. Jerry Mahoney, this is Mike Douglas. How do you do? What did he do that for? What do you do what for? How do you, How do, you do? He's doing it again. <laughs> what? Look. How do you do? <laughs> Who's working your head? No, no, don't you start. <laughs> don't you be fresh. We're, we're his guests on this show. Now you act like a gentleman. Say, how do you do? How, how do, do you do? He's doing it again. <laughs> all right, all right now. <laughs> Try this one. Wink. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I wanted you to meet Mike because this is Mike's show. Well, I didn't know it was Mike's show. You didn't tell me. Well, now I'm telling you. And I'd like you to do something to, to entertain these ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what should I do? Well, what don't you do? A, how about singing a little song for us, huh? No, I don't feel like a song. Oh, come on. Look, if you sing a little song for Mike, I'll buy you a little puppy. No, thanks. I used to be a tree. <laughs> No, you know what I mean. I'll buy you a lovely puppy, a very well-trained puppy. He'll do some tricks for you. What if he does tricks on me? Will you stop that? <laughs> Are you going to do some entertaining for Mike? He's standing right here. Okay. Uh, how about if I, uh... Look, if you don't do something fast, I'm going to put you right back in that trunk. Oh, okay, okay. I'll do a little, uh, a little, uh, nursery rhyme. Is that okay? That's fine. That's fine. Let's have the nursery rhyme. <clears throat> there was an old lady who lived in the shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Very good. There was another old lady who lived in the shoe. She didn't have any children. She knew what to do. Would you stop that? Would you, would you stop that? What kind of a kid He's is a this? A rascal. He is a rascal. You, 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 you can't do that in a What was that, one of your father's jokes? Yeah, what are you, one of your mothers? Oh, stop it. Right, I'm sorry, I'm not to put him. Oh, it's I don't want to do that. We'll be right back.